Yesterday's marathon was so much fun. Thanks for joining me again today for part two. Now let's start right where we left off. It's time to assemble our key ring strap. So what we'll do is we'll draw a center line down the length on the wrong side of our vinyl. Then we're gonna take some double-sided tape and place it on each side of that center line. Then we're gonna take the backing off of one side and we're gonna fold it over to match the line and stick it down to your DST. Repeat for the other side. Press it really well with your fingers to make sure that it's attached to the tape. Now we're gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna start on the top with a 1 8 inch seam allowance and sew down one side, across the bottom, and back up the other side. Be sure that your back stitches are very nice and neat. Remember this is a top stitch length. Now we're going to take this back to the machine and we're going to sew just on the inside of those lines with another top stitch. Now that we've sewn it, we're going to turn it wrong side up and we're going to measure from the bottom and make a mark. And then we're going to measure up and make another mark. Once we've made our marks, we're going to punch holes through those marks. Now that we've punched our holes, we're gonna take our D-ring, we're gonna put it inside, we're gonna fold the bottom under, we're gonna match up the holes, I'm going to take our little honeycomb screw, put it through the holes, make sure it's the right way. And we're now we're going to set this aside. To avoid giving out any measurements from pattern pieces, I've already marked my cutout right here for the zipper. We're going to set that aside for a moment. We're going to grab our zipper pocket lining. We're going to take it right side up. We're going to get our zipper. And we're going to align it with the top edge. The fabric is right side up and the zipper is right side up. We're going to take some clips and we're going to clip it in place. Now we're going to take it to the machine 
We're going to sew right across the top. With the zipper now basted into place, we're going to match up the right side of the lining to the wrong side of the zipper. And we're going to clip them in place. Now let's take it to the machine and sew this side of the zipper on. Now that both sides are basted into place, she recommends to iron it and press it so that it's flat and will stay open when you need it to. Let's set this aside for now. Now we're going to take our overlay. We're gonna turn it wrong side up. We need 1 8 inch double-sided tape, and we're gonna place it from end to end, staying an eighth inch away from any edge. And we're gonna do another row directly beside that one. Repeat for the other side. Now we're gonna remove only the outer backings. We need our lining fabric. And we're going to center it right over the cutout. All right, now that it's stuck down, we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew around the outer edge of the overlay. Before you go to the machine, if you were wanting to put a tag in, now is the time to do that. So add your tag before you sew. Now let's take it to the machine. Don't forget that this is a top stitch length. If you need to go slowly around these curves, you can always hand turn them or just go very slow. And when I get about here, I open it up and I pull this little loop so that both threads are in the back. And then just go slowly and meet up with your very first hole. Okay, we have the outer edge of our overlay sewn on. 
we still have the one thread up at the top. So what we'll do is we'll turn it over and you'll pull your thread back to the other side. Then you'll just knot them. Okay, once you've knotted them like three or four times, I like to leave a little bit of a tail, but cut off the excess. Now we're going to open up our zipper hole. So you'll just need to fold it in half and just open it up. And then you're gonna cut it open. You really don't have to be real neat here other than don't cut your overlay and don't cut past your stitching. So what you'll do, once you've gotten it that far, is you're gonna to wanna to expose this next row of double-sided tape. So we're just gonna cut into here a little bit, and then I like to turn it over so I can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna just snip. Remember, be sure not to cut your overlay. And I actually have my finger under here pushing the overlay down, so. I'm gonna to have to go back and trim some more so I can get to that tape. Now we're going to take off the backing from both of these double-sided tapes. And then we're gonna take our zipper and we're going to center it. You kinda gotta use your fingers behind here to see where the ends are. And you can kind of get a grasp of where you want it to be, but just center the tape in between the opening of the top and bottom. Okay, that looks good. You do want to make sure you have enough room on the outside. And you do. Now we're going to fold this lining up towards the top. We're gonna take it to the machine. We're gonna leave our tails long and we're gonna start about an eighth inch on this side of the window, go along the bottom with a one eighth inch seam allowance until you get to about an eighth inch on this side of the window. Let's take it to the machine. Be sure that your lining is up towards the top. 
and that you're on a top stitch length. With our zipper tails long, we're now gonna turn it over and pull them to the back. Now we'll tie them off. Again, I always trim them, but I leave them long because you will not see them. Now we're going to insert our zipper pull. Personal preference as to which way it opens. I like mine to open to the right, so I'm gonna have it closing to the left. So I'm gonna start on this side. There we go. So we're going to bring it into the window. It's kind of a big pull to get through there, so I'm gonna have to untape it a little. There we go. And stick it back down where we like it. And bring it only about halfway. Now we're going to take it to the machine. And we're gonna begin here at this point, go up around the top and back down to this other point. Let's take it to the machine. Couple things to make sure of before you begin to sew. One, you're gonna be on your top stitch length. And two, you wanna make sure that your pocket is folded back underneath. You want it to be under the underneath the lining. Right, again we have our long tails so we're going to flip it over to the back side and we're going to pull the loops through now we're going to tie them Again, you'll never see these tails, so I leave a little bit of length, but cut them shorter than they are. So our zipper pocket is getting close. Now what we do is we flatten it. And we're gonna actually cut along this fold. I'm gonna go cut it with a straight knife. I'll be right back. Shannon actually does her pockets a little bit different, but I learned this little trick from Amber McLean and I really like the way that this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna draw a line. On both sides. And I'm gonna use double-sided tape along the bottom edge. I'm 
I'm going to remove the backing, fold it up to the line. I'm going to take the clips, make sure my bottom lines are lined up, and clip the sides. I always put one at the bottom too, just to make sure they stay lined up. Now we're going to take it to the machine. And we're gonna sew our side seams closed for the pocket. We're gonna start right here at the top of the zipper, go all the way down the side seam until you reach the line you drew. Once you reach that line, you're gonna angle your stitching toward the inside of the pocket as you go to, to the fold at the end. You're gonna do the same thing for the other side. Start at the zipper, work your way down the side seam, stop at the line and angle it in till you get to the fold. Right here at the zipper, I like to go back and forth a few times just to secure the zipper closed. Once you get to the line here, right here, you're going to angle it in towards the inside of the pocket all the way down to the fold. Now that we've angled it, we're going to sew back and forth a few times to make a stronger turning hole. For this side, I start right at the line. That way I have my seam allowance where I want it to be. Then I backstitch at an angle toward the inside of the pocket. And then I go back and forth a few times. Again, we're at a zipper, so we're going to backstitch several times over the zipper to secure it better. Now that we've sewn our pocket shut and we angled in the bottom edges, we're going to move on to our key ring. To begin, you need your ruler and you're going to measure over. I have chosen a little bit different measurement than the pattern because I want mine on the side. And you're going to make your mark right here. Then you're going to take your strap and you're gonna make a measurement on it. And you're gonna line up your strap at the mark you made and the line you made. You're gonna have the strap overhanging the top of the lining. And then you're gonna clip it in place. Now we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna baste it in place with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. With that basted in place, we're now gonna take our lining facing, we're gonna center it at the top, and we're gonna clip it in place. Now we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to sew right across this raw edge.
Now we need to fold our seam allowance toward the lower lining. And we're going to clip that in place. When you fold it on the side with a key ring, it's gonna cause your key ring to come up. That is exactly what you want it to do. Now we're going to take it to the machine and we're gonna to top stitch on the lower lining side to catch the seam allowance and hold this in place just like this. Let's take it to the machine. Remember, this is a top stitch, and we want to make sure we keep our seam allowance going down to the lower liner. Now that we've top stitched our seam allowance down on the lower lining, we're going to take a small piece of DST. We're going to apply it right under the top stitch line. Right behind where the key ring is going to come down. And we're going to remove the backing and fold it right at the seam and press it to affix it. We're going to take our ruler, we're going to measure down, we're going to make a mark. This mark should also have the excess tab underneath it. Then we will get our hole punch and punch our hole. And it should have gone through both. And then the pattern calls to put your rivets in. Since I am using this honeycomb screw, I'm going to put that in. Make sure it goes through every single hole. If you have fraying fabric, you may want to put some fray check here. It's also a good idea to put some glue on your threads of your screw. And there we go. Okay, now we're going to mark our center at the top of our lining facing. We'll just line them up. Okay, we're gonna also mark the center at the top of our other lining facing. Set this aside for a moment. Now we need our ruler. Going to put something under it. We're gonna measure, make sure we have it centered, and we're gonna mark that center. Take our washer, center it over the mark. Take our razor knife and cut out the slot for the prongs. And then we're going to place this right over that. Let's do the other side real quick.
And again, we're going to put this right over that. I'm going to make sure that I have these nice and firm with a hammer. I'll be right back. Now that we've installed our magnetic snaps, we're going to turn our lining piece wrong side up. We have to make marks from the top edge along both side seams. So you make one mark and two marks. Repeat on the other side. All right, with those marks in place, let me explain why. The diameter at the top of the bag has to be the same on both the interior and the exterior. We used a different seam allowance on our exterior than is recommended in the standard pattern. We use the one that goes with the jelly vinyl. So our top from this line to this line is going to be the same seam allowance we used for that step. The reason for the second line is because this is a different seam allowance from this line to the bottom. You're going to angle into the interior of the bag to the desired seam allowance and then follow that seam allowance all the way to the bottom. The seam allowance here will be the same as seam allowance that you use at the bottom of the bag. The original Tuesday tote has you leaving a turning hole at the bottom here. So it also has you marking here and here. I know the opening that I want, so I'm not gonna make any marks, but we are going to keep this as a turning hole, even though we have a turning hole with our zipper pocket. We have a few more steps when we're done to show you how to make a clean bottom here, leaving this turning hole and the one with your zipper pocket. Let's repeat for the other side. Now we're going to put the magnetic snaps together, line up our side seams evenly, and clip them together. Make sure that your folded edges here, combining the lining facing and the bottom lining, are even. We're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew, come over, sew, backstitch well here, backstitch well here, sew over a little ways, backstitch well. I like to, from that backstitch, come down and backstitch well right here also. It just keeps it a much stronger seam for turning. And we're gonna come over here Backstitch well to it, come back and come across. Backstitch well, backstitch well here. Come all the way up to our mark here. And then we're gonna angle it in to our desired seam allowance to this mark here. Come up well and backstitch well. Let's take it to the machine. Okay, we're at our first mark and we're gonna angle it so that we can get to our desired seam allowance. Now we're at our second mark and we just keep that seam allowance going the rest of the way down.
So we're going to angle it back in till we get to our other mark. All right, the next step is to open up the corners. You're going to open each corner. You're gonna butterfly the seam allowance. Match them up and clip them together. Let's do the opposite one. Then we're gonna take it to the machine. And we're gonna sew with the required seam allowance right along the raw edge. Now we're gonna trim our boxed corners down. It gives you what to trim it to in the pattern. And before we move forward, we're gonna trim right here on our zipper pocket. We wanna make sure that that's really close right there. Now we're going to turn our lining right side out. Now's the time to make sure that your zipper pocket is open so that it can it's your turning hole, you have to have it open. Now we're going to grab our exterior. Whichever side you decide you want to be in the back, put that towards the back. And put them together, right sides together. So I put the lining inside of the exterior. The exterior is wrong side out. The lining is right side out. They are right sides together. Stuff it in there. And we're going to match up our side seams here. And butterfly them open. And clip them together. Do the same for your other side. And now we're just gonna go all the way around, clipping it in place. Now we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew with the recommended seam allowance all the way around the top diameter of the bag.
All right, our top edge is now sewn. So we're going to now turn it right side up. To do so, pull the lining out. We're gonna turn it through this hole. Now you're gonna to wanna to be just slow and careful so that you don't rip or pop any stitches. I like to grab the very bottom corner, just work it up. Now at this top seam, I'm going to just fold the edges right at the seam. We can trim this. At this point, you want to make sure that your seams are butterflied so that you have a more even stitching for your seam allowance, more even surface. And you see these, these are just frays from the fabric, so those can be cut off without any consequences. That's nothing, nothing to worry about. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to top stitch around our ed top edge. Let's take it to the machine. Remember that this is a top stitch length and now you have your webbing flapping around here. So make sure you don't catch your webbing. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, what we need to do is pull our lining out now because we have to close up not only the pocket but the bottom for our turning holes. You need to be very careful with this zipper. We're going to first pull our zipper pocket out through zipper opening but like I said be very careful I have had stitches get ripped 
in this step and you're almost done, you don't want that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this turning hole from the bottom of the bag and pull that through this zipper opening. Remember, be very careful. And you can squinch this down. Okay. Now we're gonna clip along the bottom of the lining. And we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew from this corner to this corner, back stitching very well between those two edges. Let's take it to the machine. Now that our lining is closed, we're gonna push it back through the zipper pocket opening. And before we close this one up, I wanna look at it to see how it looks. I don't know if you can see, but Here we go. So now we're going to take it back to the machine. We are going to clip this even all the way across and we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to sew this with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Let's make sure that's all right. We're going to take it to the machine, sew it with a one eighth inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch well. All right, we just closed our zipper pocket, so we are complete. We just have to push everything back into place. Nice slip pocket, zipper pocket. Key ring, magnetic snap. Thanks for watching. And a huge shout out to Shannon from Knotted Threads Company for allowing us to film this tutorial. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. And while you're at it, check out some of our other tutorials.